All right, just in a little video to let you know that we're back at Bond Square. Maybe we should turn around so they can see the gazebo behind us. There we go. So we're still here. Um, we've not been molested by the police yet today. We have seen a car driving past though. Yeah, we've had a few sirens and people going past, but um, they leave us alone in the main. I think from what we can gather, the, our problems have been mainly instigated by the one PCS, CPSO. yeah, one PCSO. CPSO. Is he CPSO? It's a community police support officer, I believe. Okay. A CPSO, yeah, community police support officer. It's him and him alone is the problem in the whole of Oxfordshire. Maybe he's just dictating policy for Oxfordshire policing because that's what seems to happen. If he's around, we get trouble. Um, but anyway, we've come back. Um, we've been left alone. We think we're as equipped as we can be in return to the law. Although we did actually. Um, have some awareness of, of what we were citing last week. We've got had that reinforced by some prominent lawyers. So yeah, we've got a document here. Yeah. Just in case we forget to say anything. And we've been reading some thing about the Pelian police thing. This is quite interesting. Um, this is point seven on the Pelian policing principles because obviously um, the policing was set up by Sir Robert, Robert Peel. Of course, yeah. It says um, police at all times should maintain a relationship with the public that gives reality to the historic tradition that the police are the public and the public are the police the police being only members of the public who are paid to give full time attention to duties which are incumbent on every citizen in the interests of community welfare and existence so they do have the same we have the same responsibilities we should all be on the same side fighting for the same things looking after one another and up and the best way that we can uh, look after one another is something that I felt that the um, the policeman last week got wrong in the sense that he said that um, he thought it was for the common good that we should move on. But the common good is always best served by the rights of the individual. And uh, if you start abrogating the rights of the individual, that's a recipe for disaster and it has been every time that's ever occurred. I think it's uh, also the common good and you have to really um, sort of unpick uh, for who is common good. Um, it's always for the common good of some sort of psychopathic um, group of technocrats in my opinion, is the common good. It's communitarianism. Um, and basically it's dressed up as uh, what the government wants. Uh, it's the same thing as what the government wants, really, the common good. Um, and But the, the common good, you, 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 like you say, it's based on what it, it's based on individual actions. Um, you can't just... You can't just um, oh, Thank you, Karen. Yeah. Yeah, so in, in effect what Jill's saying there is that the common good is... Um, it's just what the government wants. And this also goes back to these Peelian principles that we stumbled across. The power of the police comes from the common consent of the public as opposed to the power of the state. So that's what Jill's drawing attention to there. So, you, yeah, so, so basically they're just upholding the power of the state, a, a statute. Um, and you can't, um, you can't uh, enforce the law by just um, enforcing a statute. Uh, statutes on their own aren't the law. You can't, you can't drag the law. It's not a bit of paper you can just drag out in this dry way. Um, also, the coronavirus regulations are so vague, um, and they can be interpreted in so many different ways. So basically, you know, it's their opinion that they're interpreting it correctly, but it's our opinion that they're not. Um, and at some point, that might be have to be decided by a court. Because uh, the police will always go for the most draconian option at the moment, it, it would appear. But then again, it could be just that CPSO. <laughs> it could just, be that. Uh, just before, if you come with us, Jim. Um, we should say as well, uh, we, we, uh, the exceptions that we read out, uh, we showed to them last week, say exceptions um, is reasonably necessary for the work purposes or for the provision of voluntary services. And, and, and there it is in black and white. So we do feel we've got a pretty strong case that we are a voluntary service and that we are helping people escape um, from injury, illness or harm. So um, it's black and white. So that's not really open to interpretation about whether it's voluntary service or not. Um, that there may be, they may argue that there are certain... Uh, uh, caveats in there but they're not made explicit so as long as we're volunteers and we're voluntarily helping our community then uh, I don't think they've really got a leg to stand on so that's the, the line we'll take with them yep. yeah I agree um, and uh, I think it comes to the point where if they do tell us to pack up and they arrest us um, uh, you, so what, what do we do oh yeah, we'll tell you that in a minute okay <laughs> bye <laughs>